my name is Brayden, of course, and welcome to another Bray Plays. This time we are looking at Slender the Arrival. This is a new segment here on the channel that I like to call the Scarathon. Now, throughout the month of October, I'm going to be playing nothing but scary games. Intentionally scary games. Games like Slender, Five Nights at Freddy's, Amnesia, if that's still relevant. Well, Slender's not relevant, yet here I am. <laughs> the reason I'm starting with this game is because I'm a returning speedrunner to this game. I had a bit of a leave with this game where I just didn't touch anything Slender related at all for... I'm gonna say close to a year. But some new tricks came out. I got the PS4 version, started running that, and got a personal best of 2730. So I got some new tricks. I'm ready to rock and roll with this game. Let's get things started. So often are we guided by our devotion, our love and affection. A bond that pulls down paths not bargained. And when you find yourself alone as he casts out that bedeviling gaze, how far will it carry you? Okay, so... For all, like, two of you <laughs> that don't even know who or what a Slender Man even is, the Slender Man was created on the Something Awful forums for their Creepypasta contest by a user of the name Victor Surge. Now, Victor edited some old-timey black-and-white photos to include this tall, suited, faceless figure, gave that figure some backstory, and boom, the Slender Man was born. Pretty much it. <laughs> Now, shortly after that contest ended, Marble Hornets on YouTube picked up the Slender Man for their internet series where they documented their interactions with the Slender Man and whatnot. They decided to dub the Slender Man the Operator. Why? Beats me. Shortly after Marble Hornets Slender Man started getting some steam and popularity and started getting a bit of a following, Parsec Productions picked up Slender Man for a video game dubbed simply as Slender. Now, due to some copyright issues with a certain song within a certain mode of the original Slender, most famously the Gimme $20 mode, where wherever you saw the Slender Man, uh, the song Gimme $20 would play. <laughs> due to some copyright issues with that, the game had to be rebranded without the song. So, the game came to be known as Slender the Eight Pages. Where you pretty much walk around in a forest, collecting pages, and then when you get eight, the Slender Man kills you. That's pretty much it. It's not a very exciting game. It did have a fairly good run here on... Hold on, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm doing fence float, my mistake. Anyway, Slender had a pretty good run on YouTube a few years back at the time of this recording. Most famously through the Scarecam uh, channels. Why was I drawing a blank on the word? Shortly after the rise of Five Nights at Freddy's in 2014, Slender lost popularity and pretty much fell into the realm of obscurity and then his movie came out and he fell further into obscurity. Because the movie was less than stellar. Even though I th thought it was fairly okay. Hey Kate, it's been a while since we last spoke, hasn't it? Hope you haven't forgotten about me. I know writing a letter is a little old-fashioned, but sometimes I like to just sit down and write something out, you know? You know? You know? <laughs> so, I can't remember what I was doing at the time, but all the stuff we used to do when we were kids just came rushing back to us, me all of a sudden. The other day, remember when I'd sneak over at night so we could both go out on our adventures? Ghost hunting, we called it. We'd shine the flashlight through the trees and jump at every little insignificant noise. Our imaginations were always r working in overdrive. I wish I could rewind back to then. It seems like everything after that time just hasn't been as good for both of us. Uh, sorry, ignore all of that. I 
started rambling too much. Anyway, please, let me hear from you soon. I know things have been less than normal for you lately, so I just wanted to check in. CR. We're going to be learning more about CR as the game goes on, but there are an ass load of files throughout the game. There are 52 in total, and you can interact with everything just by simply right uh, left-clicking, my mistake, either left-clicking with the PC mouse or the X button on the PS4 controller. But there's so many things you can interact with in this game. You can interact with doors, windows, this phone that doesn't work. One old message. Hey, Kate. CR again. I hope everything's okay. I know there's been a lot to take in and wrap your head around. It'll be good when Lauren gets there to help you sell the house. Take a little load off your mind. Give me a call when you get the chance and we can talk. Take care. Press 1 to delete. 2 to return to the main menu. Well, that's new. Oh, I never knew about that. That's cool. But you can interact with doors, windows, apparently that phone, piano, radios, generators, files. Pretty much everything you that gets highlighted when you scroll over it can be interacted with. Flashlight, batteries, extra tapes, lighter, kerosene, lock the house. Ah, shit, he's here. Where is the flashlight? That's the thing we're looking for. Hey, this, fo this file's rated a 2. Thanks for calling last night. It probably sounds dumb, but it was good to hear your voice again. Good to hear that Lauren's been doing really well, too. But, yeah, about what all we said. I'm not sure what to think of it yet. But what are the odds of two people having the exact same hallucination? Could it really just be a coincidence? I have to go to my doctor today for some routine stuff, so I'm going to try and casually bring this up, see what he says about it. I'll let you know how it goes. CR. Hey, catchy. I hate the song. <laughs> anyway, let's carry on. There is one thing we're looking for on the main floor of this house. We are looking for the flashlight. Yeah, this. This allows us to see. Now, I don't know which button it is. It might be the right click, where you get this focusing beam. It's R2 on the PS4 controller. Now, this move... Can you really call it a move? This function, there we go, is going to be important in a later stage. So now that we have the flashlight, we're going to head upstairs. What tacky artwork. There we go. Now, there's one more thing we're looking for up on this top floor. Well, the second floor. We are looking for a key. Now, the key will actually get us into the room at the end of the hall. And that is our progression location. Uh, key's not here. Might be in the bathroom. Ah, look at that. Who puts a key in the bathroom? Alright, now that we got the key, we can actually head down to the end of room. Oh! He's here, but where? So this is Kate's room. We're gonna enter here. And... God, I thought I liked to draw. Anyway, this is all we're really looking for here. This is the map to the woods out the back of the house. That scream is Kate. Now, for those of you who do not know who Kate is in terms of the slender mythos, Kate is actually the protagonist from the original Slender game. Now, during the prologue of this game, which is what we're playing through right now, the prologue, the events of the original Slender game are taking place. Number three. Hey, Kate, both my computer and phone have been acting weird lately, so I figured I'd do it the old-fashioned way again. I'm glad we could meet up to talk things through. I agree with what the doctor said, too. There's an explanation for this stuff. The shared traumatic event sounds the most logical to me. That night, out there in the woods, is probably what caused it. I'd almost completely blocked that out, but now it's kind of coming back to me. But like I said before, it's still really foggy. I think the best course of action right now is to just ignore it whenever you think you might be seeing things again. I'll try to do the same. That'll probably do the trick. CR. P.S. You should call Lauren sometime. I bet some company would help out. But yes, 
the scream we heard was Kate. Kate is the original protagonist of the original Slender game, like I mentioned. And Kate screaming is the Slender Man catching up to Kate and killing her, I guess you could say. A generator? Out here? No, 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 no. This is all wrong. We're supposed to be finding these in the mines. So there is something neat about this particular area of the game as well. In the background, up on the hills, in certain scenarios, you can actually see the Slender Man. He's not here right now, but trust me, he can show up there from time to time. Fatal Blaze erupts at Oakside Home, arson suspected. Keep that in mind, that's kind of plot related. It's not overly plot related, it's kind of plot related. Oh. The camera's acting up. I wonder why. Where is he? I know he can show up from time to time. The glitch I was actually doing earlier, uh, fence float I called it, is actually a way on how you can skip going to Kate's house, getting the key and ignoring most of the opening to this game. You actually end up on that rock right there. I think it's that rock. Yeah, it's somewhere up there. I know that for for sure. I'll get a better look at the rock in just a bit. Hmm. Is he up there? No. He's being very scarce today. He's usually a lot more active than this in the prologue. Well, for me he is at least. Oh, there he is! Yeah, that's the rock that you can actually get up onto, is the one that Slender Man over there is standing on. So, depending on the order you do things, you can actually end up going to visit him. I don't know why you would, but... We're going to be learning more about this character later. This is Charlie Matheson Jr. Now, Charlie is a missing child. We're going to be finding out a lot more about him as the game goes on, so do not worry about that. But speaking of Charlie, the prologue here is the earliest we can actually encounter him. And I'm actually going to go do that because there's a file, well, two files I need to go find. And they are in this house right over here, which is the article in that newspaper clipping is the burnt house. The fatal blaze. Now where is he? No, he's around here somewhere. He's not over here. Oh, well, there he is. So this character right here, this is Charlie. Uh, like I mentioned, we're going to be learning more about him later. First, what's wrong with this place? Why did this happen to us? No answers anywhere. Am I crazy? These things I see at night, I don't know what to think. Ever since Charlie disappeared and Diane left, I must have hit a breaking point. I still keep looking. I still hear him sometimes, that cute little laugh. But he's been gone nine years. Why does every day have to hurt so much? Charles. So like I mentioned, this is Charlie. We're going to be learning more about him as the game goes on. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> See, being a speedrunner of this game, the jump scares you encounter in this game just become not really scary. So this is the Matheson family farm, the homestead. We're going to be visiting there a little bit later. Not too much later, but later enough. <laughs> We're going to be there within, I don't know, like 20 minutes. Something like that. So do not worry about that. There is another couple files we can find over here. There's one right here. Residential development takes a hold on Oakside Park outskirts. Which I believe is that building right there. I think. I could never figure out what the residential area development was. There's Slender Man over there. No, it's just a tree. That's the problem with the Slender Man. You can't really tell where he is from a distance. Now, the light you see up there, that red glowing tower, that is our end game goal. That is the radio tower. That is supposedly the safe haven from the Slender Man. We'll be there within, I don't know, like an hour? <laughs> Something like that. 
So we're just gonna make our way through this cabin here. Find me, Lauren. And pick up this book. 62 to 69. That is eight pages, if my counting is correct. That, uh, cannot possibly be an omen. And with that, the prologue is done, ladies and gentlemen. Now, there are loading screens in this game that are fairly atrocious. Not nearly as bad as, like, Sonic 06, but I will be editing them out whenever I possibly can. 